Good morning and welcome back. We're now going into the second part of our discussion. We're talking about sampling and sampling distributions. We started with how to find the mean and the standard error of a sampling distribution, okay, and particularly of sample means. And now we'll go into how to find the probability, how to calculate the probability of sample means. Now, to find the probability of sample means, we first have to know what the distribution, the sampling distribution of the sample means is. Okay, you notice from the probability distributions that actually each distribution has a way of finding the probability of a random variable. Now, even in this case, for us to know the probability, we then have to know the probability, the distribution of the sample means. Okay, so for instance, if we wanted to know the probability of obtaining a mean of 20 in our previous example, how would we find that probability? Yeah, so again, we have said that to find the probability, we need to know the distribution of the sample means. We have cases, and the first case is if the population is normal, how can we find the probability? So, if our population is normal, then even the sampling distributions of the sample means is also normally distributed. And it is normally distributed with the mean of mu. Okay, so if it's normally distributed, then we're saying that the mean of the sample means will be the population mean, which is mu. And the standard error, which is the standard deviation of the sample means, is just the same as the standard error, stand, standard deviation of the population divided by the the square root of the sample size. Now, remember we had two cases for determining the sample, I mean the standard error, okay? And this is the case when the population size is known, the sample size is known as well, okay? And that is the, the case when the population size is unknown, but just know the sample size. So we're saying that if the population is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of sample means will also be normally distributed and it will have a mean of the population mean and the standard error will be the population uh, standard deviation over the root of the mean of the root of the sample size or we'll have, we'll use this case if the population size is known. Okay, so in short, we're just saying that if the population size, if the population is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of the normal, of the sample size will also be normally distributed. And from our previous lecture, or topic of discussion, when we talked about probability distribution. We saw how we can use the standard normal to find the probability of any random variable which is normally distributed. Now, to find the standard value, the z value, we just get the x bar, that is the sample mean, and we subtract the population mean and divide by the standard error, okay? So we're back to the normal curve again. The normal curve is that, okay, but now we're saying for the sampling distributed distribution, the mean there is just the mean of this, the sample mean. 
Okay, so here, there's something that has been mentioned here. X bar is an unbiased estimator. Okay, or it is unbiased. Unbiased here, just, it's just telling us that when we estimate the population mean with the mean of the standard error, we get the same value. So that means this estimation is unbiased. We are getting the true picture when we use the sample means to estimate the population mean. Okay. Now, that is the case when the population is normal. Our second case is if the population is not normal. We don't know the distribution of the population. How then are we going to find the probability? Okay. So there's some scientists who studied this problem and they came up with a solution. The solution is known as the central limit theorem. Okay. So what the central limit theorem states is that even if the population is unknown, Okay, if you don't know the population, or if you know it and you find that it is not normal, okay, then the sample means will be approximately normal as long as you have a sample size which is large enough. So as long as the sample size is large enough, the distribution of the samples will also be will be normally distributed, okay? And if it will be normally distributed, then it will have a mean of that, and the standard error will be that. Now, our question is, what is the definition of large enough? Okay, is it 10? Is it 20? Is it 1,000? Is it a million? What is large enough? then okay so our definition for large enough is simply that our sample size should be greater than or actually equal to 30. if it's greater than or equal to 30 then the sampling distribution is approximately normal so that is our scientific definition for large enough. Large enough here just means that the sample size should be at least 8. Okay, so actually I think I've explained this. The mean should be that and the standard error. Okay, so let's have an example. The example we have is that, suppose a large population has a mean of eight and a standard deviation of three. Now suppose a random sample of size 36 is selected. What is the probability that the sample mean is between 7.8 and 8.2? 